Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, attenzione, Kylian Mbappé about Rabiot, press conference, what words did he use, something incredible, we will read them, all of them, because I translated them immediately from French, but of course we will speak also about a crazy month of April, because today is Monday, start of a new week, where we will play nine games in the total month of April, starting with Verona, and then continuing with Derby d'Italia, once again, versus Inter in Coppa Italia, the big question, of course, is what about the physical condition of Kostic? What about uh, Federico Chiesa? Big question mark. We'll try to answer them here. And of course, we'll speak a bit about Antonio Conte. The return to Juve. Yes or no, guys, put a maximum of like if you want to. You know it. It's the only way that you can support the channel. Liking, liking, liking. And subscribe if you didn't yet. We start immediately with the words of Kylian Mbappé. Oui, monsieur. Oui, madame. About Adrien Rabiot. Cavallo Pazzo. Crazy horse. He said yesterday in press conference before for the game Ireland-France that he is a player that reached full maturity on the field but also in his private life. Correct, we can see that. He also continues saying, we can clearly see that he's a completely different player and man, I had the luck to know him in Paris long time ago, you know now that you can see he's more chill and relaxed with his, his strength. He knows what he's doing. When I know that he is behind me, it gives me a lot of confidence. I know that there is someone really solid behind me. Then he continues, still about Adrien Rabiot saying, he is doing the things well. He gained importance in the team of France. We see it on the field and also in the group of the field. He is establishing himself more and more. This is a benefit for the team and for him because the talent I really believe that the talent, he always had the talent. Mamma mia. I love, I would love, I would dream of someone speaking that well about me when I'm not present in that room. Mamma mia. Kylian Mbappé speaking so well regarding our player, the number 25 of Juventus, the Frenchman that still is growing, still is doing better. Piano, piano, with disaster start at Juventus. We spoke it so well. But the question that we were all asking ourselves was, why are all the coaches always playing Adrien Rabiot? Sarri, Pirlo, Allegri the first year. Why and what do they see in that man that is actually making sure that he's starting every single game except of the fact that he's never injured why and how well Kylian Mbappé today is giving one of the answers of that question the guy has always had talent I know him since really long but now at his 27 or 28 years he reached full maturity he's giving me confidence when he's behind me look guys at the moment we have sometimes problems offensively because we don't know who is playing there Federico Chiesa Di Maria Kostic we don't know because we are missing a lot of times players because of injury Vlaovic and so on but guys I can reassure you one thing listening to the words of Kylian Mbappé and comparing them with the words of Allegri, Sarri, but also in the past, Ancelotti, Tuchel, all these persons, Deschamps, that are always playing him, we can say that he is a solid player behind a striker, a striker, whoever he is, low, mediocre, or a top world class like Kylian Mbappé, having a player like Adrien Rabiot is fantastic. Why am I speaking with so much energy about Adrien Rabiot because first of all it's Kylian Mbappé that is speaking about that and that's fantastic but also because he's a player that is arriving at the end of his contract and he left the door open to continue with Juve. I would love to keep Adrien Rabiot. I think he deserves it. I think he arrived at an age where he understand who he is. He's confident and for the people that are saying after his contract he will drop, he will collapse, he will disappear. I believe this is wrong. I believe that wherever he will go, in another team or remaining at Juve, I believe that we can see a full mature Adrien Rabiot. Anyway, we go to another topic because we have some things to discuss today. L'inchiesta prisma. But before that, I want your opinion about Rabiot, huh, guys. Were we wrong in analyzing his performances? Were we right and he's proving us wrong now? Do we want to continue with Rabiot? All of that in the comments. L'inchiesta prisma. This morning, there was the first trial, or at least to hear the people of the prisma investigation. What is prisma? It's the financial books that, according to some people, were alternated. Well, today, there were some Juve person that were present. We saw 
some people there, also the PM, the accusation, what was it about? Because at the end it was 20 minutes long where they decided to postpone it, where Juventus, they had the intention to move it from Torino to another city, Milano, where you have the stock exchange or Roma to actually go away from Torino where we feel ourselves a bit persecuted. Anyway, at the moment it has been postponed. It's an investigation and a trial that can go really long in time. So it's not really the case to go into details on that one now. Just one thing that you have to know, the Prisma investigation started. It has nothing to see with the minus 15 point. That's another story and that story will be clarified hopefully on the 19th of April. Other things about our players that hopefully can be there on the field in Juve Verona, Tutto Sport is speaking about, of course, other sport because it is international break, but also about Il Giorno dei Giudizi, the day of judgment, Prisma investigation, at the end, nothing happened, but also about Kostic and about and Federico Chiesa, I was about to say Enrico, his father, Federico Chiesa, of course. Well, today they will do some further exams. Kostic yesterday was released from his Serbian national team to go back to La Continassa, to Torino, to do some exams. Nothing serious. It was more a precaution matter to be actually alert and not go into risking some injuries for the Serbian player. So is he injured? No, he is not injured. He has a small problem at the Achille tendon that has to be monitored. Maybe with a few days of rest because we are Monday and we are playing on Saturday. He can recuperate already for Saturday. Maybe he can miss one game. So nothing serious, but it's really in precaution. And we have some hopes to see him there. If he will not be there, well, Ealing Jr. that he's living the dream with the under 20 English team scored a brace versus Germany could potentially be ready to play versus Verona. Guys, we have to win versus Verona. No blah blah, no blah blah. Otherwise, we are also speaking about Federico Chiesa that is in Austria, also there. There is positivity, there is confidence in the Juve world that it's nothing serious, we know it. After 20 minutes of Juve Inter or Inter Juve, he was actually asking to be subbed out. It was also there, it is out of precaution. Max Allegri reassured, he said, of course, there is a small detail that is making him feeling hurt and he feels some pains but it's also more the fact that he's scared so today he's going for further examination where he had that surgery and we will know a bit more about the physical condition i believe what i'm reading what i know that a lot of things are circulating around the psychological mental scare of federico chiesa to push to push to push after a year being stopped guys it makes sense nothing serious for the two players let's see if they need to rest versus verona and be ready full 100 versus inter gazzetta dello sport instead is speaking about italy that yesterday won 2-0 versus malta but also about something else antonio conte yesterday totally official has been sacked or can we say sacked they found a mutual agreement with Tottenham to sack and to stop the contract of Antonio Conte. Conte is not the coach anymore from Tottenham. His vice, Stellini, will be at the helm of Tottenham until the end of the season. Will they try to go for Nagelsmann or not? That's another story that we don't know about. Why am I speaking about Antonio Conte? Because, of course, Antonio Conte has always been linked with a return to Juve when Andrea Agnelli was already there in the beginning of the season. There were some rumors that they became friends again. Andrea Agnelli is not anymore the president of Juve at the moment. In the future, who knows? But looks like everything is going according one path, one journey, one decision. Max Allegri continuing with Juventus also the next years. I don't know if it's good or not to continue with Max. I don't know if he will continue, yes or not, with Allegri. One thing that I know at the moment is I believe that Antonio Conte would be the wrong decision to let him come back at this very moment to Juventus. We spoke about it long yesterday in an extended video uh, in the live. Guardian Sport, and this is the last one thing I wanted to say about Antonio Conte, said... Tottenham fans do not expect silverware, but they do demand progress, excitement and unity. This is where Conte failed. Well, yes, it's a failure of Conte, but I believe it's also a failure of Tottenham. If you bring in your house Antonio Conte, there is one thing that makes him happy that is winning silverware trophies this is the only thing guys i repeated it so many times he called his daughter 
Victoria or Vittoria. What does that mean? Victory. The guy is only going for winning. Sometimes it happens, a lot of time it happens in his career, especially in domestic competition. Sometimes he feels, now, it's the first time that he's in a club where he didn't win anything. If you want him to go for excitement, for unity, it can work. For progress, it can work, but only if he's able to show silverware at the end of the season. If this is not working and Antonio Conte doesn't see the possibility to win, well, it's a failure. And this is what happened to Tottenham. So I believe it's not only Conte that failed, but also Tottenham in choosing someone that was obsessed and is obsessed by victory. Anyway, the shirt of Juve, you know it. I will never tell you if yes or no, this is 100% the shirt that will be released in the last home game of the season with Juventus playing with this shirt. But they leaked that one yesterday. We spoke about it during the live. Yesterday, I've put it on my Twitter page. Well, uh, zebra patterns with the line. So no solid black and white lines, but zebra pattern there. Yellow is confirmed in that image. Let me know your opinion. Let me know what you think about that shirt. And then finishing with Nicolo Zagnolo. Yesterday, there was a double page on Zagnolo saying, I don't know if I will remain five years in Turkey with Galatasaray. He sends messages of, I want to come back to Italy. We know it and we always knew it. Zagnolo has always been followed by Juventus, especially by Paratici in the past. That was also following him when he was at, when he is still at Tottenham. But that's another story. But Zagnolo has always been there in the eye of Juventus. Of course, he has a release close of 35 million euro. That is not making Juventus scared, but of course they want to negotiate if he is the solution. Why is Zagnolo still in target of Juve? He is Italian, he's still young, he's flexible, he can play in different positions, he has that dynamism and also that sense of revenge with a relatively low salary, less than an Angel Di Maria, for example. Then, of course, it's the head, it's the behavior. Max is one of the perfect men to work with, hot heads as we call them because he has the maturity to calm down some players and ask them to give more to behave better to be able to perform better on the field can he be a player that we love yes he could potentially be but the risks of and uh, Nicolo Zagnolo are huge especially tactically I don't understand because it's already some days now that Gazzetta dello Sport with Marco Guidi are putting some lineups where you don't see Fagioli, first of all. I don't understand why Fratesi should replace one that is in our home and we are speaking about Fagioli. I don't understand that. But on top of that, for me, Nicolo Zagnolo, if you have a Di Maria, if you have a Chiesa, I don't see his spot on the field. Then, can we find a spot for him? Probably yes, but I, I, don't, I don't see it happening. For me, next season, I don't see Nicolo Fagioli at Juve. Maybe in two years, maybe the post-Angel Di Maria if he remains. Let's see, but I don't see it. Also because you are about to sacrifice uh, Philip Kostic if you go back to a 4-3-3 with Zagnolo and Chiesa. You sacrifice Philip Kostic in a lot of, of alternatives with Nicolo Zagnolo. I don't believe this is the best thing that we can do, but tactical, in-depth analyze, we will see them in the future anyway. Nicolo Zagnolo has always been in target of Juve, always been linked to Juve, and like Paredes, like Rabiot, like Milik, well, never say no. Let me put all, let me read all your comments in the chat. Thank you for putting a maximum of likes, subscribing to the channel. Grazie, forza. Juve.